Hey scientists, welcome to Over the Top Science. I'm Mr. Crouch. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to separate mixtures. We're going to create mixtures and then we're going to use a variety of tools to separate them. There'll be a materials list right after this portion of the video and a materials list before each investigation. Please keep in mind that many things can be substituted and you should have no problem finding all the tools you need to do all the investigations. Happy science everyone. Let's get started. Okay, here's your materials list for all three investigations. Uh, before each one, I'll give you an update on the materials li list and some ideas for substitutions. Okay, scientists, for the first investigation in separating mixtures, you're going to need water. I have 500 milliliters here. Uh, that should be just fine, probably a little bit too much. Two transparent cups. Black pepper. A paper plate. If you don't have a paper plate, a paper towel would be fine. A coffee filter. Ask your parents if you're at home. Most schools have coffee filters. A funnel. This is called a sieve. If you have one of those, S-I-E-V-E. -E. If not, a lot of sinks have these in them. You could use one of these instead. A pair of tweezers if you have them. Not necessary, but if you have them. A pipette if you have it. A rubber band. A magnet. And some paper towels or even better, a towel. A towel is more environmental. It holds a lot more spills. All right, so take out your science journal and let's get started. Okay, here's a list of the materials you'll need for the investigation. Uh, keep in mind you don't need every single one of these materials. I'm sure you can come up with water, spoon, some cups, uh, a coffee filter, rubber band, paper plate, and paper towel. If you can't find the other things, that's fine. Uh, another thing is you're going to work in pairs. Uh, if you're in a class, uh, pick a classmate. If you're at home, possibly pick a sibling or a parent. If you can't find anybody, you can do it independently, but it's better if you work in teams of two. So let's pause the video and gather your materials. Okay, before we begin the investigation, take out your science journal, title a new page, Separating Mixtures, capitalize both words and underline the title. Skip a line and write mixture, and we're going to go ahead and define it again. A mixture is a combination of two or more substances that keep their physical properties. Uh, you may remember in the last lesson we mixed uh, black pepper and water. Uh, when you put them together, the black pepper stayed as black pepper. The water stayed as water. They were just mixed together. None of them dissolved. So that is a mixture. Skip a line, write solution. And a solution is a mixture that one substance dissolves in the other. Uh, if you wrote the definition last time, you're going to see I changed it a bit this time. Um, I wrote a special kind of mixture where one substance dissolves in the other substance. Uh, as you see this time, I'm including the fact that a solution is actually a mixture because you are combining two, two or more substances. But it's a special one, one where one substance dissolves in the other. So what you could say is all solutions are mixtures, but all mixtures are not necessarily solutions. In a moment, we're going to be combining the black pepper and the water and separate them. But before we do, we're going to describe the physical properties of each of them. So skip a line after solution and write black pepper and water. And then we're going to make another list of properties of water. So we're going to make a bulleted list of the properties. So just go ahead and write that down. Pause the video and make sure you have all these notes. Okay, so get your paper plate, your teaspoon, and your pepper. And get about a half a teaspoon of pepper and put it on the plate. I like the plate because it's white and it's easy to maneuver it around. And what I'd like you to do is use your journal and describe some of the physical properties of the pepper. You already wrote the heading properties of black pepper, so make a bolded list. You may want to consider size. You may want to consider state of matter, texture, things like that. So go ahead and make your bolded list. When you're done with that, do the same with the water. Get your transparent plastic cup or glass and pour in about 275 milliliters of water. And what I'd like to do is describe the physical properties of the water. State of matter, 
maybe the volume of the water. I put 275, whatever you put. Any properties of water you could think of, write it under properties of water. Okay, let's talk about the physical properties of black pepper. First thing I like to talk about is the state of matter. What's the state of matter of black pepper? You got it, it's a solid. Then the size, I put small particle size. You could also say instead of small, you could say fine, and fine means it's smooth and small. And then of course we could talk about the color of black pepper. Yes, black pepper is black. So go ahead and write black. And now let's talk about the properties of water. What state of matter is water? Yep, it's a liquid. What color is it? Well, it's clear, but we've been using the word transparent to describe things you could see through, that light passes through. So let's call it transparent. Definitely more sciency. And um, I wanted to put one more, so I came up with odorless. It has no smell, so I put odorless. Okay, in a moment, you're going to combine the black pepper and water and make a mixture. Then it's going to be your job to separate the mixture. So you and your partner are going to come up with a plan. You're going to come up with a plan and use as many tools as you want to efficiently get the black pepper out of the water and separate the mixture. So when you're ready, take your black pepper, pour it in your water. You may want to stir it up with a spoon. And then discuss with your partner the, the, what tools you want to use and what plan you want to do. I can't wait to see what you come up with. All right, so what tool did you use? Did you use a funnel? Well, the funnel's no good because the particle size of the pepper is way too small and this hole is way too big. A magnet's not going to work because you need the pepper to have the physical property of magnetism. And since it's not made out of iron, it's not magnetic. So this is, of course, not going to work either. While this would be very fun, the pipette, it's not going to do much. Uh, it would take forever. Now the spoon isn't a bad idea. <clears throat> the spoon would work. The spoon would work. I could certainly get lots of pepper out using the spoon, but I wonder if there's a better tool. Ooh, maybe this one. I don't know. I think the uh, the sieve here, just like the funnel, although the holes are smaller, the pepper is going to pour right through there. So that doesn't work. So did you use the the filter, the coffee filter? If you did, that was probably the best thing you could have used. If you did not use the coffee filter, please pause the video and go ahead and do it. Otherwise, now I'm going to show you how I use the coffee filter. Maybe it'll be slightly different than what you did. So what I did is I put the coffee filter on the inside of the other cup that we have. And one thing you could do, but you do not have to do, is you could use this rubber band. And the rubber band would, could kind of hold it around. And that makes a nice little fit around to hold it. Otherwise, your partner could hold it in place for you. Then what you want to do is you want to pour it nice and slow into the cup. You want to make sure it goes down. And this is exactly how a coffee maker works. The hot water goes through, gets the coffee flavor, and it goes down. Of course, this is pepper, so it wouldn't be very good. But this is how you do it. And now the liquid water is passing through, and the solids are getting stuck on the top of the filter. So I'm curious is, is if this is what you did. You know, and this is a, a very, I, I love this activity. This is, this is very fun and you can do it multiple times and try it different ways. I've seen people put the filter on top and pour out of it. Uh, I think it's a, very complicated. So I think this is actually the best way. So we have successfully separated the black pepper from the water. 
So what physical properties of everything helped us out? Well, the physical properties of the filter helped us for sure because the filter allowed water to go through and held a salad on top. The water being liquid did pass through, and the black pepper, even though it was very fine and small, it got stuck on top of the filter. So what I'd like you to do now is go back to your science journal, draw a diagram of exactly what you did, showing where the black pepper is, showing where the water ended up, and write a couple sentences of what you did and why it worked. Make sure when you draw your diagram, you label everything. You want to label the water. You want to label the filter. You want to label the black pepper on top. If you use the rubber band, go ahead and draw it. If you didn't, do not draw it. So make sure you're accurate. All right, do a good job. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so here's your assignment again. Draw a diagram of how you separate the black pepper from the water. Make sure you label all parts of your diagram. Label the cup. Label the black pepper. Label the filter. Label the water that went through. If you had a rubber band on it, label that as well. And then explain how the physical properties of the water, the pepper, and the filter allowed you to be successful in separating the mixture. Pause the video. Take your time. Okay, are you ready for your second investigation? You're going to make another mixture and you're going to separate it. This time you're going to use rocks, small pebbles, metal paper clips, sand, and beads. Uh, these are little plastic beads with holes in them. If you don't have this, you can use anything that floats. All right, so you're going to have the same tools you had last time. You'll have your magnet, you'll have your coffee filter, you'll have your sieve, you'll have your funnel. Everything we had last time, except this time you're going to have water and you have to use it. But you may not get the sand wet, so you're going to need to know when to use it. All right, let's get started. Okay, did you separate all the objects? Did you consider all the physical properties and why the tool you used was effective? All right, you should have done that by now. If you haven't done it, please pause the video. If you have, let's look at one way you could have done it. All right, well, at the very beginning, I said you, ha you could not get the sand wet. So I'm going to take the sand out of the picture and get rid of it. So I'm going to use my sieve. All right, so I'm going to take the cup of sand that I started with, and I'm going to make sure I get all the sand back in. Now, everything in here is a solid, but the sand is very fine, and this has very small holes, and nothing else falls through but the sand. So this is an excellent tool to get the very uh, the particle size of sand out of the picture. All right, so let's do a little bit more shaking here. Get it all cleaned out. All right, so now I've got that out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put all those objects back in. So I don't need the sieve anymore, I'll put that away. Now, I'm thinking about the paper clips. What physical properties of paper clips might help me? Well, I said they were metal, and you should have used metal paper clips, and a magnet is attracted to metal. So let's get all those out. And I'll put these on my paper plate. Very simple. Make sure I got them all. Yep. Nope, one more. All right, so now I'm left with rocks and beads. Well, I said you had to use water, and I'm not sure if you realize why you would use water, but let's go ahead and pour it in and see what happens. What's happening to the beads? See, the beads are going to the top. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the beads are less dense than water. And that's another physical property, density. Density is a physical property that can be measured. And one thing you know about density is objects that are less dense than water float. So since these are all to the top, I can simply, I can use a spoon if we decide we're not allowed to use our hands. Or I could just pick them off with that. So I'll go ahead and take the beads out. See if these come up to the top. There we go. If you shake it enough, they'll all come to the top. So now I'm just left with the water and the rocks. So what tool should I use now? Well, there's a couple of tools we could use. We can go back to the coffee filter. That might work. I'm not sure if the paper would hold the rocks, but it might. We could certainly use the sieve again. Uh, this might actually be the best tool. 
But I think in the interest of using different tools, I'm going to try something new. Let's try the funnel. I think the funnel will work because this is a small funnel and the hole in the bottom is small and I believe the liquid will go through and the rocks will stay in. Let's give it a try. So here, I'm holding it above. All right, all the rocks are out. All the water is out. Get the last couple of drips of water out. And there we go. All the rocks are on the inside. I'll pour them on my plate. So we managed to separate it all out. We're back to just water. We have sand. We have our rocks. We have our beads. And we have our paper clips. So we've done it. So it's time to go back to our journal. Let's list all the materials that we used and the physical properties that assisted us. All right, let's go back to our science journal and report our findings. Uh, last investigation, when we reported our findings, we drew a diagram, we labeled the diagram, and we wrote a little bit about it. This time, let's use a table. So let's create a table, title it Separating Mixtures, and then the labels will be Substance slash Objects, the science tool we used, and the physical property that assisted. So we separated out the sand, the paper clips, the beads, and the rocks. So the first thing we did was the sand. And for that, I use a sieve. If you use something different, then write what you used. So I'm going to write sieve in this column here. And then how did the sieve help? Well, I put the particle size of the sand was small, so the sieve allowed the sand to pass through and the rest of the objects remained in the cup. So put your justification here as well. Uh, now take a moment and complete the table. Put in your paper clips, your beads, your rocks, the tools you used, and how the physical properties helped. Okay, scientists, we're going to do our third investigation. You may recall when we took the notes on mixtures and solutions, we said mixtures can usually be separated, and we said solutions cannot be separated, but there were a few exceptions. Well, we're going to do one of those few exceptions. We're going to mix salt and water, which is a solution. The salt dissolves in the water, and then we're going to separate it. What you're going to need for today's investigation is a pie plate, also called a pie tin. If you're at home and don't have one of those, a frying pan or a metal pot will work. It won't ruin them, so it's fine to use them. Uh, we're also going to need, of course, salt. We're going to need 100 milliliters of water. You don't, it's just approximation. If you don't have it, that's fine. A transparent cup, a rock, and a spoon. All right, let's get started. Okay, here's your materials list for the third investigation, all the things I just mentioned. Uh, pause the video and gather these materials. All right, I have 100 milliliters of water in this beaker. I'm going to pour it into my cup. And this is what 100 milliliters of water looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and pour a teaspoon in here on my spoon. And I'm going to stir it in and make a solution. I want all the salt to dissolve. Uh, stirring accelerates the dissolving process, so that's why I'm stirring it. Thermal energy also does too, so if you could use warm water, but be very safe. You don't want to make it too hot. Um, it all dissolves, so I'm going to put a little bit more in. Not much. At some point, the water gets saturated with the salt, and it won't dissolve anymore. So you really don't want that to happen. All right, that seems like enough. So now I'm going to take my pie plate, and I'm going to pour it in. And you're going to put your pie plate either on a porch outside or even inside next to a window. If you're going to put it outside, I would recommend putting a rock inside so it doesn't blow over. Again, water will evaporate on the inside, so either place is fine. It'll evaporate quicker outside. Okay, now that you've set up your uh, investigation on separating salt from water, let's get out our journals. So now, the before part, I want you to draw a diagram of exactly what you did. Uh, label everything, label the pie plate or if a pan if you used it, label the water, label the salt, and draw a picture of where you put it. Did you put it next to a window? Did you put it outside? Then write the word prediction, and write a simple prediction of what, exactly what you expect will happen. After a while, when you're done, all the water should go away. And why does it go away? Uh, draw a diagram of what happened in your pie plate. What did you observe? And was your prediction correct? And lastly, this is kind of a conclusion here. What caused the uh, salt to separate from the water? What else could you have done to separate the salt from the water? 
Okay, scientists, I hope you enjoyed uh, separating mixtures and solutions for that matter. Uh, if you want to take this lesson a little bit further, consider making your own mixture and using tools to separate it or making your own mixture and challenging someone else to separate it. Uh, but that does it for today. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at overthetopscience at gmail.com. And happy science, everyone.